Are you ready to conquer the USMLE Step 2 CK like a true champion? Picture this. Instead of scrolling through social media or binge watching the latest series, you dive into mastering your medical knowledge. Imagine trading in those extra coffee breaks for a deep dive into patient care and diagnostics. That's how you truly ascend to greatness in medicine. Join me as we explore this comprehensive review designed to fit into your busy schedule. Whether you're on a treadmill, taking a long drive, or just need a break from the books, this review is your ticket to acing the exam. Let's start this journey together and turn your dreams into achievements. What does the presence of proteinuria, dysmorphic erythrocytes, and red blood cell casts in urine suggest? These findings suggest a glomerular origin, specifically glomerulonephritis. What does a confidence interval that includes zero indicate? It indicates no significant difference between the group means. What does a confidence interval that excludes zero indicate? It indicates a significant difference between the group means. What are the provocative maneuvers used to diagnose a meniscal tear? The Thessaly test involves standing on the affected leg with the knee flexed to 20 degrees and then performing internal and external rotation. A positive result is indicated by pain, catching, or palpable crepitus. The McMurray test involves holding the knee in internal and then external rotation flexing and extending the knee while palpating the joint with a positive result indicated by pain or an audible or palpable click. How are astrocytomas classified and what are their characteristics and prognosis? Astrocytomas are classified into grades. Grade 1 and 2 astrocytomas show increased cell proliferation and atypia, but lack necrosis, mitosis, and neovascularity and have a good prognosis. Grade 3, or anaplastic astrocytomas, have an increased number of mitoses and a good prognosis if excised completely. Otherwise, they may progress to grade 4. Grade 4 astrocytomas, or glioblastoma multiform, show neovascularity and possibly necrosis, often believed to have progressed from lower-grade astrocytomas or arisen de novo, and have the worst prognosis among all grades. What are the treatments for chronic lymphocytic leukemia, CLL, and chronic myeloid leukemia, CML? For CLL, rituximab, an antibody against the CD20 antigen expressed on B lymphocytes, is used. The primary cause of death in CLL patients is infections, which are a significant risk. For CML, imatinib is used, which inhibits the product of the BCR-ABL tyrosine kinase fusion gene. What causes hypovolemic hyponatremia and what lab abnormality can watery diarrhea lead to? Hypovolemic hyponatremia occurs when low volume triggers extrarenal antidiuretic hormone, ADH secretion, activating the renin-angiotensin-aldosterone system, RAS, leading to extra renal fluid losses associated with decreased urine output and low urine sodium. Watery diarrhea can lead to hypovolemic hyponatremia. What are the right-to-left and left-to-right cardiac shunts? Right-to-left shunts include truncus arteriosus, transposition of the great vessels, tricuspid atresia, tetralogy of phallot, and total anomalous pulmonary venous return. Left-to-right shunts include atrial septal defect, ASD, ventricular septal defect, VSD, patent ductus arteriosus, PDA, and endocardial cushion defects. What renal abnormality is seen with multiple myeloma? Multiple myeloma leads to renal insufficiency due to the overproduction of protein causing monoclonal light chains to clog renal tubules, resulting in intratubular cast formation and toxicity, known as myeloma cast nephropathy. How is a spinal epidural abscess treated and what is avoided? In patients with a spinal epidural abscess, high-dose glucocorticoids are avoided to prevent worsening of the infection. Instead, broad-spectrum antibiotics are administered first. What is the treatment for hyperkalemia causing AV block? The treatment for hyperkalemia causing atrioventricular AV block is intravenous calcium gluconate. What complication can arise from severe rhabdomyolysis following seizures? Severe rhabdomyolysis from seizures can lead to hyperkalemia, which may cause heart block or arrhythmias. In what condition is myxedema madness seen? Myxedema madness is seen in hypothyroidism. What is the first step in managing diabetic ketoacidosis? DKA. The first step in managing DKA is starting the patient on intravenous normal saline, 0.9%. Why is insulin administration delayed until after the fluid bolus in DKA management? Insulin administration is delayed until after the fluid bolus to prevent rapid decreases in serum glucose and plasma osmolality, which could promote osmotic water movement into the brain and increase the risk of cerebral edema. 
When is dextrose 5% added to normal saline in the treatment of DKA? Dextrose 5% is added to normal saline when the serum glucose level is less than or equal to 200 mg per deciliter. What are the criteria for switching from continuous IV insulin infusion to subcutaneous insulin in DKA? The criteria for switching include the patient being able to eat, glucose dropping below 200 mg per deciliter, bicarbonate levels over 15 milliequivalents per liter, and the anion gap being below 12 milliequivalents per liter. When is intravenous potassium added in the management of DKA? Intravenous potassium is added if the serum potassium level drops below 5.3 milliequivalents per liter. What tests are ordered for Henoch Shunline Purpura, HSP? Tests for HSP include abdominal ultrasound, kidney biopsy, skin biopsy, and urinalysis. What is the initial management of knee osteoarthritis? The initial management of knee osteoarthritis includes exercise, weight loss, and non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, NSAIDs. What is acropachy, and in which disease is it seen? Acropachy is the thickening of the extremities seen in hyperthyroidism, along with onycholysis and fingernail clubbing. What is the go-to treatment for carpal tunnel syndrome? The go-to treatment for carpal tunnel syndrome includes wrist splinting, local corticosteroid injections if splinting fails, and surgical intervention. When is indomethacin avoided as tocolysis in the management of preterm labor? Indomethacin is avoided if the gestational age is greater than 32 weeks due to the risk of premature closure of the patent ductus arteriosus, PDA. What should be suspected in cases of syncope at rest? Syncope at rest should raise suspicion for a cardiac arrhythmia. What is another name for bunions? Bunions are also known as hallux valgus. What distinguishes a manic episode from a hypomanic episode? A manic episode is characterized by more severe symptoms lasting for at least one week or requiring hospitalization, may include psychotic features, and significantly impairs social or occupational functioning. A hypomanic episode involves less severe symptoms, lasts for at least four consecutive days, represents a clear change in functioning, does not cause marked impairment or require hospitalization, and does not include psychotic features. Are depressive episodes required to diagnose bipolar 1 disorder with manic episodes? Depressive episodes are common, but not required for the diagnosis of bipolar 1 disorder. What is cyclothymic disorder? Cyclothymic disorder involves fluctuations between mild hypomanic and depressive symptoms over a period of more than two years without meeting the full criteria for manic or major depressive episodes. What statistical methods are best suited for a qualitative independent variable with a qualitative dependent variable? Chi-square or logistic regression are best suited for analyzing relationships between qualitative independent and qualitative dependent variables. When is a trial of proton pump inhibitors, PPIs, prescribed in babies with reflux disease? A trial of PPIs is prescribed for problematic reflux that persists despite non-pharmacologic measures in babies. What is assumed in a child with a high fever without an obvious source? A urinary tract infection, UTI, is suspected in a child with a high fever without an obvious source, necessitating a urinalysis and urine culture. How is idiopathic intracranial hypertension diagnosed? Idiopathic intracranial hypertension is diagnosed with a lumbar puncture showing an opening pressure greater than 250 millimeters of water. Before performing a lumbar puncture in patients with suspected elevated intracranial pressure, what must be ruled out? Mass lesions must be ruled out before performing a lumbar puncture in patients with suspected elevated intracranial pressure, typically through urgent imaging like CT or MRI. What findings suggest a diagnosis of idiopathic intracranial hypertension? Findings that suggest idiopathic intracranial hypertension include an empty cella, flattening of the posterior sclera, and narrowing of the venous sinuses. How are bipolar 1 disorder with psychotic features and schizoaffective disorder differentiated? Bipolar 1 disorder with psychotic features involves psychotic symptoms exclusively during manic or depressive episodes. Schizoaffective disorder is differentiated by the presence of mood symptoms along with psychotic symptoms over the course of the illness, distinct from the episodic nature of bipolar disorder. Why should fluoroquinolones be avoided in patients with an aortic aneurysm or substantial risk factors for an aortic aneurysm like Marfan syndrome or Ehlers-Danlos syndrome? 
Fluoroquinolones should be avoided due to the risk of increased collagen degradation, which can potentially exacerbate an aortic aneurysm or lead to an aortic dissection in patients with underlying risk factors. What is the standard prophylaxis streptococcus, GBS, during labor? The standard prophylaxis for GBS during labor is administration of ampicillin or penicillin. For those allergic to penicillin, a cephalosporin is used as an alternative. How do the onsets of IgA nephropathy and post-streptococcal glomerulonephritis, PSGN, differ? IgA nephropathy onset is typically within days following an infection, whereas PSGN onset is generally weeks after a streptococcal infection. What strategies can help prevent falls in the outpatient setting? Preventing falls in the outpatient setting can involve screening for musculoskeletal issues, ensuring proper vision and hearing, checking bone density, assessing for orthostatic hypotension, reconciling medications, reviewing home safety, correcting vitamin D deficiency, and implementing a supervised exercise program. How can falls be prevented in the inpatient setting? In the inpatient setting, preventing falls involves assessing fall risk, creating custom prevention strategies, optimizing the environment, such as rearranging furniture and lowering beds, conducting frequent checks on patients at high risk for falls, avoiding restraints, and not over-relying on fall alert systems. At what ages does Hodgkin lymphoma typically occur? Hodgkin lymphoma typically occurs in a bimodal age distribution, primarily in young adults between 15 and 35 years old, and then again in individuals over 60 years old. How can you differentiate between an anterior mediastinal mass in Hodgkin lymphoma versus a germ cell tumor? Both conditions can present with elevated lactate dehydrogenase, LDH, levels and symptoms of anterior mediastinal compression. However, germ cell tumors are more common in individuals aged 20 to 40 years and lack the eosinophilia that can be seen in Hodgkin lymphoma. What distinguishes placenta previa from vasa previa in their presentations? Both conditions may present similarly, but with vasa previa, there is rapid deterioration of fetal heart rate tracing due to fetal origin hemorrhage, which is not typically seen in placenta previa. What is the single most important prognostic factor in breast cancer? The single most important prognostic factor in breast cancer is the tumor stage. Higher stages and greater tumor burdens are associated with poorer prognosis. What vaccines are live attenuated and therefore generally contraindicated in severely immunocompromised individuals? Live attenuated vaccines include MMR, measles, mumps, rubella, varicella, chickenpox, influenza, intranasal formulation, rotavirus, adenovirus, used by the military, typhoid, TY21A oral vaccine, and BCG, bacil calmet for tuberculosis, used in some countries. What vaccinations are indicated for adults with HIV? Vaccinations for adults with HIV include hepatitis A and B vaccines, human papillomavirus, HPV vaccine for those aged 11 to 26, considered up to age 45 with shared decision-making, annual influenza vaccination, inactivated formulation, meningococcal vaccine, serogroups A, C, W, Y for specific age groups and risk factors, pneumococcal vaccines, PCV20 or PCV15 followed by PPSV23 and tetanus, diphtheria and pertussis, Tdap once, then Td every 10 years. What is trachoma and why is it significant? Trachoma is the leading infectious cause of blindness worldwide. It is characterized by follicular conjunctivitis in its active phase, leading to scarring, eyelid inversion, trichiasis, and eventually corneal opacification and blindness if not treated. How do symptoms of multiple sclerosis, MS, differ from those of a stroke? MS symptoms typically develop over days to weeks and can be more diffuse, while stroke symptoms have a hyperacute onset, localized to a specific arterial distribution, and may include cortical signs and symptoms of increased intracranial pressure, which are not characteristic of MS. What are the associated injuries with fractures of ribs 9 through 12? Fractures of ribs 9 through 12 are associated with liver, spleen, and kidney damage due to the location of these ribs near abdominal organs. What is the time frame for developing folate deficiency in alcoholic patients? Folate deficiency can develop within 5 to 10 weeks in alcoholic patients due to poor dietary intake and impaired absorption. What indicates conductive hearing loss during a tuning fork test? When a tuning fork test results in sound lateralizing to one ear, it indicates conductive hearing loss in that ear. 
This is because the affected ear is better at picking up sound conducted through bone than sound from the surrounding environment, which is typically masked by conductive hearing loss. What is otosclerosis and how is it treated? Otosclerosis involves an imbalance of bone resorption and deposition in the ear, leading to stiffening and ultimately fixation of the stapes bone in the middle ear. Treatment options include the use of hearing aids to amplify sound or surgical intervention to replace the stapes bone with a prosthesis. What communication strategy can be used with a dying patient who wishes to live longer despite a poor prognosis? The wish-worry model can be employed, where the healthcare provider expresses, I wish you could stay longer, but I worry that you may not. This approach acknowledges the patient's desires while gently conveying the seriousness of their condition. What type of nerve damage and muscle impairment can result from an anterior shoulder dislocation? An anterior shoulder dislocation can cause axillary nerve damage, void muscle, affecting arm abduction. What are the side effects of valproate? Valproate can cause several side effects, including hepatotoxicity, tremor, thrombocytopenia, low platelet count, and alopecia hair loss. How do osmotic and secretory diarrhea differ in terms of their stool osmotic gap? Osmotic diarrhea is characterized by a high stool osmotic gap greater than 125 milliosmoles per kilogram, indicating that the diarrhea is driven by the ingestion of osmotically active substances. Secretory diarrhea has a low stool osmotic gap less than 50 milliosmoles per kilogram, suggesting the diarrhea is due to the active secretion of electrolytes and water into the intestines. When is ambulatory ECG monitoring indicated? Ambulatory ECG monitoring is indicated when there is a suspicion of intermittent arrhythmias that have not been captured by standard ECG during a clinic visit to monitor and diagnose potentially irregular heart rhythms that occur sporadically. What are the clinical features of basal cell carcinoma? Basal cell carcinoma typically presents as a pearly nodule with skin-colored appearance, rolled edges, telangiectatic vessels, small visible blood vessels, and may include central ulceration. It tends to invade locally but rarely metastasizes. What type of drug is amicacin and what are its common side effects? Amecosin is an aminoglycoside antibiotic. Its common side effects include nephrotoxicity, specifically acute tubular necrosis, which can lead to acute kidney injury, and ototoxicity, which can affect both hearing and balance. If a patient has a tracheoesophageal fistula, TF, what additional screenings should be conducted? For patients with TEF, screenings for cardiac and renal abnormalities should be conducted due to the possible association with the Vactoral Association, which includes vertebral defects, anal atresia, cardiac defects, tracheoesophageal fistula, renal anomalies, and limb abnormalities. What does the acronym Vactoral stand for in relation to congenital malformations? Vactoral stands for vertebral defects, anal atresia, cardiac defects, tracheoesophageal fistula, renal anomalies, and limb abnormalities, representing a non-random association of birth defects. What does the acronym CHARGE stand for? CHARGE syndrome is characterized by coloboma of the eye, heart defects, atresia of the choanae, retardation of growth and or development, genitourinary abnormalities, and ear abnormalities. What contributes to higher cost, lower quality, and lower value of care in medical practice? High variation in care for common medical conditions, especially when there are established evidence-based management guidelines, contributes to higher costs, lower quality, and lower value of care. How can adherence to evidence-based practices be encouraged among physicians? Providing physicians with data-driven feedback on their individual clinical performance compared to benchmarks and peers can encourage adherence to evidence-based practices aiming to reduce unnecessary variation in care. What should be looked for in x-rays when diagnosing osteoarthritis? In x-rays for diagnosing osteoarthritis, key features include subarticular sclerosis, increased bone density near the joint, joint space narrowing, indicative of cartilage loss, and the presence of osteophytes, bone spurs, which are hallmark signs of the condition. Which bacteria are typically described as gram-positive in pairs and chains? Group B, Streptococcus agalaxiae, is commonly described as gram-positive bacteria that appear in pairs and chains, often associated with neonatal infections and infections in pregnant women. 
How do the mechanisms of respiratory failure differ between botulism and Guillain-Barre syndrome, GBS? In botulism, respiratory failure results from impaired neuromuscular transmission, leading to muscle paralysis, including the muscles involved in breathing. In Guillain-Barre syndrome, respiratory failure is due to impaired axonal transmission across peripheral nerves, which can also affect the respiratory muscles. When is pyridostigmine discontinued in patients with myasthenia gravis? Pyridostigmine, used to improve muscle strength in myasthenia gravis patients, is discontinued when patients are at risk of impending respiratory failure due to the potential for increased bronchial secretions necessitating discussions about possible endotracheal intubation. What is the age distribution and epidemiology of lichen sclerosis? Lichen sclerosis exhibits a bimodal age distribution affecting prepubertal girls and peri- or postmenopausal women. It is a chronic condition of the skin, typically affecting the genital and perianal areas, leading to significant discomfort and risk of scarring. What are the most prevalent comorbid conditions in patients with Tourette's syndrome? The most common comorbid conditions in individuals with Tourette's syndrome include attention deficit hyperactivity disorder, ADHD, and obsessive compulsive disorder, OCD. How soon after the diagnosis of tics do patients develop OCD? Patients typically develop obsessive compulsive disorder about three to six years after the onset of tics. What are some less common comorbid conditions associated with Tourette's syndrome? Less common comorbid conditions associated with Tourette's syndrome are autism spectrum disorder, anxiety, depression, learning disorders, disruptive behaviors, impulse control issues, and conduct disorder. What is reactive attachment disorder, RAD? Reactive attachment disorder occurs due to interruptions or inconsistencies in adequate caregiving during critical periods of development. Children with RAD often show social and emotional inhibition, do not respond typically to comforting, and may exhibit extreme aggression or violence in situations that do not seem threatening, including sudden irritability or aggressive episodes in safe encounters. When should you consider post-exposure prophylaxis in hepatitis A patients? Post-exposure prophylaxis should be considered for close contacts, child care center workers, and food preparation workers who have been exposed to hepatitis A. How should nipple discharge in women over 40 be evaluated? In women over 40, nipple discharge should be evaluated with both a mammogram and an ultrasound, unlike in women aged 30 to 39, where a mammogram may or may not be accompanied by an ultrasound. How many outcomes versus risk factors do case control studies consider? Case control studies consider one outcome, but can evaluate exposure to one or more risk factors. What's the medical term for Charcot joint disease? The medical term for Charcot joint disease is neuropathic arthropathy, commonly seen in patients with diabetes mellitus. What's the mechanism for Charcot joint disease? The mechanism involves impaired sensation and joint proprioception leading to the disease. You suspect pyloric stenosis. What is the next best step in management? The next best step in managing suspected pyloric stenosis is an abdominal ultrasound. What is a major complication of succinylcholine? A major complication of succinylcholine is electrolyte derangement leading to cardiac arrhythmia, specifically an efflux of potassium resulting in life-threatening hyperkalemia. In neonatal respiratory distress syndrome, NRDS, with central cyanosis, no heart murmurs, and a pulse oximetry reading of 76% on room air that does not improve with 100% oxygen, what is the diagnosis? The diagnosis would likely be transposition of the great arteries, given the described symptoms and the lack of improvement with oxygen administration. How is pertussis treated? Pertussis is empirically treated with azithromycin, a macrolide antibiotic. <laughs> How is placenta accreta diagnosed? Placenta accreta is diagnosed after fetal delivery when there is difficulty detaching the placenta from the uterus. How to minimize blood loss from placenta accreta? To minimize blood loss from placenta accreta, an emergency hysterectomy is often performed. What are common causes of myalgia? Common causes of myalgia include inflammation, as seen in polymyalgia rheumatica, and thyroid disease. What causes acute chest syndrome, and who gets it? Acute chest syndrome is caused by vaso-occlusion in the pulmonary microvasculature, primarily affecting patients with sickle cell disease. What are exacerbating factors? manifestations, and management strategies for acute intermittent porphyria. 
The exacerbating factors for acute intermittent porphyria include certain drugs, fasting, and hormonal changes. Manifestations can include abdominal pain, neurological symptoms, and psychological symptoms. Management involves avoiding triggering factors, administering glucose or carbohydrates, and using heme therapy in severe cases. Differentiate between Conus medullaris syndrome and Cauda equina syndrome. Conus medullaris syndrome, vertebral level, L1, L2, spinal level, upper motor neuron, UMN, tracts of the lumbosacral cord. Presentation, severe low back pain, mild or absent radicular pain, bowel bladder dysfunction. Physical examination, motor weakness usually symmetric, hyperreflexia, UMN signs, symmetric perianal numbness. Cauda equina syndrome, vertebral level, L2 sacrum. Spinal level, lower motor neuron, LMN, lumbosacral spinal roots. Presentation, mild or absent low back pain, severe radicular pain, bowel bladder dysfunction. Physical examination, motor weakness usually asymmetric, areflexia, hyporeflexia, asymmetric saddle numbness that may extend to the leg. What drug class is doxylamine? Doxylamine belongs to the antihistamine drug class. What are virilization characteristics? Virilization characteristics include clitoral enlargement, voice deepening, male pattern baldness, and increased muscle mass. For a female presenting with the above-mentioned symptoms, what could be the diagnosis? The diagnosis could be a sertoli Leydig tumor, which is known to produce androgens leading to virilization. What exactly is fractured in a penile fracture? In a penile fracture, the fibrous band, known as the tunica albuginea, is fractured. What is a concomitant injury that occurs in penile fractures? A concomitant injury that can occur in penile fractures is urethral damage. What is the next best step in management for suspected penile fracture? The next best step in managing a suspected penile fracture is retrograde urethrography to assess for urethral injury. ADHD is commonly misdiagnosed with what other condition? ADHD is commonly misdiagnosed as hearing impairment. How to tell the difference between ADHD and hearing impairment in kids? The difference between ADHD and hearing impairment can often be discerned through evaluating language development progress and social interaction with hearing impairment typically associated with poor progress in language development and social isolation. What is advanced sleep-wake cycle disorder? Advanced sleep-wake cycle disorder is characterized by falling asleep earlier than conventional hours and waking up naturally several hours before dawn. What are the sources of vessels for hemothorax? Sources for hemothorax include large vessels like the aorta and hilar vessels, as well as smaller ones like intercostal blood vessels and lung parenchyma. What is the definitive treatment in patients with thrombosed external hemorrhoids? The definitive treatment for patients with thrombosed external hemorrhoids experiencing debilitating pain is hemorrhoidectomy. Conservative management is recommended for those with milder pain. What does it mean when you hear an S3 heart sound in mitral regurgitation patients? Hearing an S3 heart sound in patients with mitral regurgitation indicates a volume overload situation and may precede acute decompensation. Diagnosis, intense holosystolic murmur best heard at the cardiac apex? The diagnosis is mitral regurgitation. What are intraductal papillomas made up of? Intraductal papillomas are made up of papillary projections composed of epithelial and myoepithelial cells. What's spinal dysraphism? Spinal dysraphism refers to conditions related to the incomplete closing of the neural tube, such as a tethered spinal cord. Symptoms of tethered cord include back, buttock, and leg pain, as well as sensory and motor dysfunction and diminished reflexes, i.e. lower motor neuron signs. Pain worsens with exercise, and leg weakness due to muscle denervation can lead to gait abnormalities, muscle atrophy, and foot drop. Scoliosis can result from improper positioning to relieve back discomfort, and bladder bowel dysfunction is also common. How to diagnose tethered cord syndrome? The diagnosis of tethered cord syndrome is typically made through MRI of the spine. Which conditions do you see bloody ascites in? Bloody ascites is commonly associated with hepatocellular carcinoma, among other conditions that can cause bleeding into the peri- Acid fastness in tuberculosis versus nocardia? Tuberculosis bacteria are strongly acid fast due to their mycolic acid-rich cell wall, whereas nocardia species are weakly or partially acid fast, displaying a more variable staining pattern. What contraception is considered postpartum? 
postpartum contraception options include subdermal progestin implants and intrauterine devices, which are highly effective and avoid the risks associated with estrogen-containing products shortly after childbirth. Why can't you use combined oral contraceptive pills, OCP, postpartum? Combined OCPs are not recommended immediately postpartum due to the increased risk of thromboembolism associated with estrogen. Why aren't progestin-only oral pills as recommended as implants postpartum? Progestin-only oral pills are not as effective as implants due to the potential for user error, making implants a more reliable choice for postpartum contraception. What risks do short pregnancy intervals, less than 6 to 18 months between delivery and the next pregnancy, have? Short pregnancy intervals are associated with an increased risk of pregnancy complications, including low birth weight, preterm labor, and preterm pre-labor rupture of membranes, possibly due to persistent genital tract inflammation. Varicoceles are associated with an increased risk for what? Varicoceles are associated with an increased risk for infertility and testicular atrophy, possibly due to the slightly increased scrotal temperature affecting sperm production and health. What intervention is needed for older men who do not have concerns about fertility with varicoceles? For older men without fertility concerns, no intervention may be needed for varicoceles unless symptoms are present or significant testicular atrophy occurs. How about younger men with varicoceles? Younger men with varicoceles should be followed for signs of testicular atrophy or changes in semen analysis with abnormal findings generally warranting surgical intervention to improve fertility. Management for neuroleptic malignant syndrome includes what? Management for neuroleptic malignant syndrome involves stopping antipsychotics or restarting dopamine agents, supportive care, hydration, cooling, intensive care if needed, benzodiazepines, and potentially bromocryptine or dantrolene if symptoms are refractory. What is cyclic neutropenia? Cyclic neutropenia is characterized by a genetic mutation in neutrophil elastase resulting in accelerated apoptosis of neutrophil precursors, leading to cyclic increases in neutrophil counts alternating with severe neutropenia, correlating with recurrent episodes of fever and mucositis about every three weeks. What are the six P's of acute limb ischemia? The six P's of acute limb ischemia include pain, pallor, paresthesia, pulselessness, poikilothermia, cool extremity, and paralysis, a late sign indicating severe ischemia. How to differentiate between lithium-enhanced physiologic tremor and tremor due to lithium toxicity. Lithium toxicity typically causes an irregular, coarse tremor involving multiple parts of the body, accompanied by gastrointestinal or additional neurologic symptoms, Unlike enhanced physiologic tremor caused by lithium, which is symmetric, limited to the us, and does not accompany systemic symptoms. Failing to adjust for comorbidities may lead to what type of bias? Failing to adjust for comorbidities can lead to confounding bias, where an external variable influences both the independent and dependent variables, potentially misleading the effect of the study's focus. What causes primary focal segmental glomerulosclerosis, FSGS? Primary FSGS is believed to be caused by a circulating factor that leads to podocyte injury, resulting in kidney dysfunction and nephrotic syndrome. Despite its immune-mediated nature, immunofluorescence is typically negative, but steroids may help in treatment. What causes secondary FSGS? Secondary FSGS results from podocyte injury due to factors like glomerular hyperfiltration, e.g. severe obesity, solitary kidney, toxins, e.g. heroin, or infections, e.g. HIV causing kidney dysfunction and proteinuria that may or may not reach nephrotic range. What is the next best step in management for neonates with hydrocele? For neonates with hydrocele, the next best step in management is reassurance and observation, as most hydrocele's, both communicating and non-communicating, tend to resolve spontaneously by age one year. When to use packed red blood cell transfusions. Packed red blood cell transfusions are recommended in acute gastrointestinal bleeding for patients with hemoglobin levels below 7 grams per deciliter. A higher threshold of hemoglobin below 9 grams per deciliter is considered for unstable patients with acute coronary syndrome or those with active bleeding and hypovolemia. What lifestyle modifications are considered first-line therapy for Meniere's disease? For Meniere's disease, lifestyle modifications include dietary salt restriction, 
maximum two to three grams per day, limitation of caffeine and nicotine, limitation of alcohol, and avoidance of allergy triggers. These measures may help reduce endolymphatic fluid and improve symptoms. What are features suggestive of functional tremor? Features of functional tremor include abrupt onset and a static course that results in functional disability disproportionate to the tremor magnitude, increased severity with attention, and decreased with distraction, complex features or clinical inconsistencies, and changeable features such as shifting tremor frequency or the ability to chase the tremor to different locations. What precipitates premature atrial contractions? Premature atrial contractions can be precipitated by tobacco, alcohol, caffeine, and stress, which should be identified and avoided. CLL is associated with what type of anemia? Chronic lymphocytic leukemia, CLL, is associated with warm autoimmune hemolytic anemia, where the body's immune system mistakenly destroys its own red blood cells. What age group and disease does splenic sequestration occur in? Splenic sequestration occurs in young children with sickle cell disease, causing splenomegaly and a rapid drop in hemoglobin with compensatory reticulocytosis. Why are sickle cell disease patients at high risk of delayed hemolytic transfusion reactions? Patients with sickle cell disease are at high risk of delayed hemolytic transfusion reactions due to frequent exposure to minor antigens via repeated transfusions, leading to an immune response against transfused red blood cells. What's the onset of DHTR? The onset is more than 24 hours or even up to one month after transfusion. What symptoms are associated with symptomatic delayed hemolytic transfusion reaction? The symptoms can be fatigue, dyspnea, jaundice, and low-grade fever with lab evidence of hemolysis. What causes hypoxemia in patients with obstructive sleep apnea, OSA? In patients with OSA, recurrent collapse of the pharynx during sleep causes transient airway obstruction, leading to short periods of apnea or hypopnea, which reduce blood oxygen levels. The kidneys respond by increasing erythropoietin production, leading to elevated hematocrit levels, polycythemia. What are MRI findings in Alzheimer's disease patients? In Alzheimer's disease, MRI findings typically include temporal lobe atrophy, most prominently in the hippocampi and surrounding medial temporal lobes, usually seen in later stages of the disease. What is the onset of postpartum blues and the recommended treatment? Postpartum blues typically begin within a few days after childbirth, with symptoms peaking around five days and resolving within two weeks. The recommended approach is to reassure the patient that these symptoms are common and usually improve without specific treatment, but to advise her to seek medical advice if symptoms do not remit spontaneously or worsen. When is the use of sildenafil contraindicated? The use of sildenafil is contraindicated in patients taking nitrates due to the risk of severe hypotension. It should also be used cautiously in patients on alpha blockers for the same reason. What are risk factors for developing acute otitis media? Risk factors for developing acute otitis media include young age, 6 to 18 months, lack of breastfeeding, daycare attendance, passive smoke exposure, and seasonality, with higher incidence during fall and winter. When is thoracentesis indicated? Thoracentesis is indicated for the evaluation of undiagnosed pleural effusion, especially when there is no clear evidence of congestive heart failure or when the diagnosis is uncertain and requires confirmation through pleural fluid analysis. What kinds of biases commonly cause diagnostic errors? Diagnostic errors are commonly caused by cognitive biases, which are unconscious mental shortcuts that can distort clinical judgment and decision-making. What causes cognitive biases and how can these biases be reduced? Cognitive biases are caused by reliance on unconscious mental heuristics that simplify decision-making processes but can lead to errors. These biases can be reduced by applying metacognition, which involves understanding and reflecting on one's own thought patterns and biases, and by employing systematic approaches to decision-making, such as checklists or algorithms. What is the first-line treatment for uterine atony? The first-line treatment for your uterine atony involves bimanual uterine massage and administration of high-dose oxytocin to stimulate uterine contractions and reduce bleeding. Characteristics virtually pathognomonic for homocystinuria include what? Fair hair and eyes. Developmental delay and a history of cerebrovascular accidents are characteristics virtually pathognomonic for homocystinuria.
If uterine atony persists despite initial trepin management, if uterine atony persists despite initial measures, additional medications such as tranexamic acid, misoprostol, and other uterotonic agents may be indicated to control hemorrhage and manage the condition effectively. What does a phase three trial assess? A phase three trial assesses the treatment efficacy and safety in a large sample of affected patients, comparing the new treatment to standard treatments or placebo to evaluate long-term or rare adverse effects, determine overall benefit, and guide regulatory approval for commercial use. What is assessed in a phase one trial? A phase one trial assesses the toxicity, maximum tolerated dose, adverse effects, pharmacokinetics, and pharmacodynamics of a new treatment, typically in a small number of healthy subjects, to establish safety and dosage guidelines for further trials. What is studied in a phase four trial? A phase four trial studies adverse effects caused over time by a new treatment after it has been approved and is on the market. This phase assesses long-term safety and effectiveness, monitoring for any rare or delayed side effects in a larger, more diverse population. What does a phase two trial assess? A phase two trial assesses the efficacy of a drug or treatment and further evaluates its safety. This phase aims to determine if the drug works for a specific condition or disease and to gather more information on dosing and side effects. How to manage radial head subluxation. Radial head subluxation, often referred to as nursemaid's elbow, can be managed through manual reduction techniques such as hyperpronation of the forearm or supination of the forearm and flexion of the elbow. These maneuvers often result in symptom resolution within minutes. What increases the risk for myocardial free wall rupture post myocardial infarction? MI. Delayed reperfusion therapy, or no reperfusion, significantly increases the risk for myocardial free wall rupture post MI due to more extensive myocardial necrosis. The risk is highest within the first week after the acute event. Reversible causes of asystole pulseless electrical activity include what? The reversible causes of asystole or pulseless electrical activity, PEA, are often summarized by the five H's and five T's, hypovolemia, hypoxia, hydrogen ion, acidosis, hyper, hypokalemia, hypothermia, tension pneumothorax, tamponade, cardiac, toxins, thrombosis, pulmonary, and thrombosis, coronary. A negative rapid antigen detection test, RAT-T, in a child should be confirmed with what and why. A negative rapid antigen detection test in a child should be confirmed with a throat culture, especially in settings where the prevalence of streptococcal infection is high. This is because the risk of acute rheumatic fever is significantly higher in children with untreated streptococcal pharyngitis than in adults, making it crucial to accurately diagnose and treat streptococcal infections in pediatric populations. What is an ampullary pregnancy? An ampullary pregnancy is a type of ectopic pregnancy where the embryo implants in the ampulla of the fallopian tube, which is the most common site for ectopic pregnancies. What is a corneal pregnancy? A corneal or interstitial pregnancy is a specific type of ectopic pregnancy where the embryo implants within the muscular wall of the uterus at the site where the fallopian tube meets the uterine cavity. This type of ectopic pregnancy can be particularly dangerous due to the risk of uterine rupture. What is threatened abortion? Threatened abortion refers to a situation where there is vaginal bleeding during the first 20 weeks of pregnancy without cervical dilation and the pregnancy may still continue normally. It's a warning sign, but not all threatened abortions result in pregnancy loss. What is a missed abortion? A missed abortion refers to a pregnancy loss where the fetus has died but has not been expelled from the uterus. Women may not experience any symptoms initially, and the diagnosis is often made during a routine ultrasound. What is an inevitable abortion? An inevitable abortion occurs when signs of pregnancy loss are present, such as vaginal bleeding and cramping, along with cervical dilation, indicating that the miscarriage cannot be prevented. What is a complete abortion? A complete abortion occurs when all products of conception have been expelled from the uterus before the 20th week of pregnancy, typically accompanied by resolution of symptoms once the tissue has passed. Potential complication of congenital diaphragmatic hernia? A potential complication of congenital diaphragmatic hernia is pulmonary hypoplasia, where the lungs are underdeveloped due to the herniation of abdominal organs into the thoracic cavity, affecting normal lung growth. 
Fulminant hepatitis is commonly seen in which conditions? Fulminant hepatitis, characterized by rapid liver failure, is commonly seen in conditions such as hepatitis B virus, HBV, hepatitis C virus, HCV, and autoimmune hepatitis. What is the disease course of hepatitis A virus, HAV infection? The disease course of hepatitis A virus infection is generally benign, characterized by symptoms such as fever, nausea, vomiting, and diarrhea. It is self-limiting and typically resolves without progressing to chronic disease. What is caudal regression syndrome? Caudal regression syndrome is a rare disorder characterized by abnormal development of the lower, caudal end of the spine. It can run to more severe cases involving the lumbar spine, potentially leading to leg paralysis and organ dysfunction. What does a type 1 error imply in statistical analysis? A type 1 error occurs when the null hypothesis, the hypothesis that there is no effect or no difference, is incorrectly rejected in favor of the alternative hypothesis. It's also known as a false positive error. How to decrease the chance of a type 2 error? The chance of a type 2 error, which occurs when the null hypothesis is incorrectly accepted, failing to detect an actual effect, can be decreased by increasing the sample size of the study. A larger sample size improves the study's power, making it more likely to detect a true effect if one exists. How is necrotizing fasciitis treated? Necrotizing fasciitis is treated with aggressive systemic antibiotic therapy and operative debridement of the affected areas. Early and aggressive surgical intervention to remove necrotic tissue is critical for stopping the progression of the infection and improving patient outcomes. What is reactive thrombocytosis? Reactive thrombocytosis refers to an elevated platelet count that occurs as a secondary response to another condition, such as infection, inflammation, iron deficiency, or following splenectomy. The platelet count usually returns to normal once the underlying condition is resolved. What is a risk of complication for reactive thrombocytosis? While reactive thrombocytosis itself is usually benign, there may be an increased risk of thrombotic events due to the elevated platelet count, particularly in cases where counts are extremely high. How can we prevent thrombotic events in reactive thrombocytosis? Preventing thrombotic events in patients with reactive thrombocytosis involves using antiplatelet agents like aspirin, particularly in patients with extremely high platelet counts or additional risk factors for thrombosis. When do we use periodic platelet pharesis? Periodic platelet pharesis is used in essential thrombocytosis, particularly in patients who are experiencing life-threatening thrombotic events such as stroke, pulmonary embolism, or limb ischemia. This procedure can help reduce the platelet count and the risk of further thrombotic complications. What kind of findings warrant an endometrial biopsy? Endometrial biopsy is warranted in cases of irregular, heavy, unpredictable bleeding, or bleeding not associated with usual premenstrual signs and symptoms, such as bloating, breast fullness, uterine cramps, especially in women at risk for endometrial carcinoma or other pathological causes of bleeding. Labs seen in iron deficiency anemia, in iron deficiency anemia, labs typically show low iron concentration, low transferrin saturation, and low ferritin levels, indicating a deficiency in iron stores. When do you consider renal ultrasound and renal arteriography for young patients with hypertension? Renal ultrasound and renal arteriography are considered for young patients with hypertension when there is suspicion of secondary causes, such as renal artery stenosis or other renal abnormalities especially if hypertension is severe, resistant to treatment, or there are other clinical indicators of renal pathology. What is breast-specific gamma imaging, and when do we use it? Breast-specific gamma imaging is a nuclear medicine technique where technetium 99 m sestamibi is injected to highlight areas of increased metabolic activity in the breast. It is used when conventional imaging like mammography and ultrasound are non-diagnostic, especially in patients with dense breasts or when evaluating the extent of known breast cancer. What's the most common type of breast cancer? The most common type of breast cancer is invasive ductal carcinoma, which originates in the ducts of the breast and has the potential to spread to other parts of the body. Risk factors for breast cancer? Risk factors for breast cancer include a family history of breast cancer, genetic mutations such as BRCA1 and BRCA2, early menarche, late menopause, nulliparity, 
postmenopausal obesity, and exposure to estrogen through hormone replacement therapy or oral contraceptives.